All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we're going over the mixtape film study. In today's film study, we'll have a lot of different methods of me as a slasher teaching you guys how to get better contact dunks, the use of hop dunks, maybe different hop packages too that we're going over in this in this film study as well. So if y'all enjoy the video, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all that good stuff. And without further ado, we'll get straight into this. If y'all could hit 500 likes for me though, I'd appreciate that. We'll bring the animations video tomorrow if you do, and I have no doubt that that'll happen anyway. So it'll it'll happen anyway. All right, <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, we're gonna straight into this. So. I got a little notepad of all these dunks that I had right here, and we're just gonna go ahead and go go through them all one by one. Like I said, if you want to go ahead and watch the mixtape for itself before you watch this video, though, feel free to. But anyway, this right here, simple contact dunk. You're probably thinking, yo, Laker, isn't this gonna be the entire video? No, not at all, <laughs> all right? But anyway, I just wanted to get out of the way. The first one is a very simple contact dunk. Doesn't really, qu really require any, any like, description or detail. Now, this right here, y'all know the spin dunk. The spin dunk is insane, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in tomorrow's video as well. Like I said, we're going to go over the animations that I have equipped. We're going to go over how to do all this stuff, like the dribble tutorial, the dunking tutorial, all that stuff. So I'm going to let this play full speed for y'all to see how it works, and then I'll like kind of break down my mindset on it. So you're going to see, boom, you spin past one defender, spin past the next. It's just a ridiculous move. Now, the thought process behind this one in particular, I have a lot of different breakdowns because this is in the this is in the mixtape probably four times, so you'll see a lot of different instances of this. But anyway, like I said, this specific one right here, CB chilling at the bottom of the screen. He's my teammate. Obviously, like that's his defender that's trying to guard him, so I'm not too concerned with him. But the functionality of this move, it still lets you do that even if two people are double teaming you. You can slide past the first defender on the perimeter with this spin move, and then you can contact dunk or dunk near in this situation, um, the dude in the paint. But you see, he kind of just moves out of the way. But really cool kind of just breakdown I wanted to like do for y'all there. It's a really cool move, and you're going to see it later in the mixtape too. And understand, a lot of this, if you guys are new to the channel, is going to be pausing, rewinding, fast forwarding, yada yada, all that stuff. This is the mixtape film study. If y'all want to watch the real mixtape <laughs> go do it i would appreciate it in the first place anyway it was fire too so if you want to see this full speed and like real cool and with the music instead of my voice <laughs> then feel free to do that anyway so number three we got the crawford hop contact dunk so this right here you see i get to his right correct now he starts moving over to the right you can't see it right now but he starts moving over to the right and you see how this hop dunk gets me to his left now, I already like wanted to do all this. Like it, it, it was all thought out like that. Now, I thought that I could get a normal dunk right here, but it kind of the game like moved him back for the contact dunk. So, just understand, a lot of this you think it's like randomized and you're like, "Oh, because you weren't trying to do that, it's not like it, it, like that's no that's no skill. It didn't take anything to do that." Look at that. How it like moved him backwards just to be able to get put into this contact dunk. The thought process stays the same. I should have had a wide open dunk, but they just moved him back so he could get contact dunked <laughs> so hey i mean on top of that it's all it's all good in my book but i just want you to understand that is like how that works right there now this right here is kind of what i was going for on the last one where basically I, i'm trying to get past him i'm not trying to get a contact dunk so you see boom i'm moving to the left he thinks he want he's trying to cut off my left side you can see and, and again i I am not going to apologize for any like rewinds in this video because we're trying to like really teach in this video. So understand, he thinks that I'm going for a contact dunk on his left side. He's trying to cut that off. So boom, he gets to my left side. I know he's thinking that. It's a, it's all a game of cat and mouse. You got to like, you got to know what they know, basically. <laughs> so anyway, he's trying to get to my left side. He cuts that off. I hit the hop get to get to his right side right there and this Crawford is so beautiful for doing that stuff and it's so clean and so finesse and I love it but, and I'm gonna keep playing this a little bit while I'm talking on this note but just understand long athlete is definitely the best one like the best layup package this right here is just so clean though and I want to be different I'm gonna put it like that a lot of people have been talking about oh all it takes is to hop dunk I want to be different all right so I'm gonna go ahead and use this Crawford package and honestly, there's a lot more to this that I'm going to explain to y'all and maybe make a, a separate video on the on the Jamal Crawford layup package. But anyway, um, moving along. This one right here, simple contact dunk, but I want y'all to see where this defender is. This allows me to get the contact dunk because he's in that spot. Now, if he were right here or right here when I started the contact dunk, I'm a firm believer in the fact that I can't get contact dunks when there's two people standing in the paint in that red area. I, I am a firm believer in that. It could literally be two, five, seven play sharps and, I, and you can't get contact dunks, but you can hop through them easily, obviously. Now, 
like I said, just keep that in mind when it comes to slashing because I feel like where a lot of y'all go wrong is you try to go up on those double teams or two people in the paint and it literally just doesn't work. I'm telling y'all for real, like I've seen it firsthand. It could be two five seven play sharps, I can't get the dunk. Meanwhile, it could be one seven three pure rim and I can get contact dunks. It's just, I literally feel like two people being near just disables anything from happening. Now in the same clip right here, you're gonna see nasty use of the Crawford. I want y'all to really understand how this works. So the best explanation I have of it is try to position yourself in the middle of the two defenders and fit right through the window with the layup animation. So you're gonna see I'm going right between the two of them, right? You see I'm like to the to the right of the big man, to the left of the guard. And you see, boom, it's just beautiful how that comes full circle. And this is what I'm talking about. I wanna be different with this Crawford package, man. But anyway, moving along. Clip number six, we got the chair pull. So this is like an Insta chair pull. And I have two of these in the mixtape. I don't have anything, but understand there are different ways to pull the chair than just to only get this animation right here, where I'll just, I'll just play it full speed again. There's different ways to get it than just this insta insta chair pull right here, but this is like the best looking one where you're just pushing your left stick away from them as soon as they hit that back down. And half the time the ball is going to pop out if they're doing the aggressive back down, which means they're holding RT as they are doing LT as well, or if you're on P4, L L2 and R2 um, together. But anyway, you get the deal. Just move your left stick away from the defender when he's backing you down. You can get these easy chair pulls. This is like a big thing of being an undersized big man and it helps you a ton. Okay, so number seven <laughs> clip. This is the beautiful rec spin dunk I was talking about. So you're gonna see, this is what I was talking about. You spin off that first defender, boom, he's gone. And then now it's danger zone. This dude is dead. He's just, he's dead in the water, bro. So anyway, you got a little, little man sitting in the paint in 5v5 Pro-Am. Obviously, it's not gonna go too well. So boom, you see, I shred off the, I shed off the first one, contact dunk on the second one. Beautiful use of it. I want y'all to really understand that is how that works. So moving on, clip number eight, we have the fake pass that gets the big reeling over to the left to help his guard. I know a lot of y'all know about this, obviously. So boom, you're gonna see. Big man is sliding over to the left because he's worried my guard is gonna have a wide open three because I hit his because I hit his guard with the fake pass. So that gets him outside the paint a little bit, just enough for me to get a contact dunk. Now, he actually played really good defense on this. You see I have 20 points and <laughs> now that's 22 right there. And honestly, I'm surprised he even helped out like that because for the most part, for the most part, you gotta understand like how the game works too. Once these people get beat by that, I feel it, like even once they just don't do it. Or if I have a lot of points, these bigs like rarely ever do that because they just are tired of getting shredded. But props to this guy who's playing good team defense. He just was too slow to to get to the right position on this. All right, y'all. So clip number nine. This is another spin dunk right here. You're gonna see this dude in black. I'm not concerned with him. It, this is easy to spin off. You can just shed the first defender and then boom. It's all about that positioning of the dude down low. You see, it's just a crazy move. Now, it's hard to do, don't be wrong, it's very hard to do and it's very hard to explain, but I'm gonna explain to y'all how to do it in tomorrow's video. Just stay tuned for that. Anyway, number 10, simple contact dunk, no explanation really required. Clip 11 is also a, like a snatch block that again, I don't really have ex any explanation of like how to get that any better than I did. And then number 12, another simple contact dunk. Same thing in clip 13 simple contact dunk now i know a lot of y'all are thinking like yo i clicked on this video to learn how to get more poster dunks what is this dude talking about okay so this one right here clip number 14 this one is a really good explanation beat him really quick off the first step to the right with slasher takeover he basically already like lost off this right here you see he's just reeling and when I, like, I'm just saying, I came up to the top, boom, hit that move, right? He's reeling to the left because he, I was just moving to the left. Now he's still moving left while I'm moving right. At this very moment, he lost. Like, he's getting dunked on. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Now, this is a, this is one thing about my build speed, as well as height, is just, when I have this type of angle, you're, you're done. Like, <laughs> there's nothing happening here. You're, you're getting contact dunked. <laughs> anyway, I just want you to understand that. Like, angles and positioning are all, are like a huge thing, but... Anyway, nasty screen, no explanation required. Now this one right here is one of my favorite Crawford packages right here. So you're gonna see what happens. It's this ball hand one, look at this right here. So I'm gonna put it through my legs from the front and like boom, do that. Now this right here, it gets me past the big man. And then this right, it's just easy. Contact dunk on a, on a guard, no problem. Anyway, so we got snatch block right there. Uh, clip 18, easy block as well. 19, just a you know basic uh, pro-am 
block and then right here it's we got a four round burst of just blocks okay so clip 21 this one i can't really explain all that well either i'm gonna just play it full speed for y'all to see and i'll just rewind it and and kind of explain what happened so that right there i was going for the offhand hop dunk right here like i'm trying to hop to the right my player didn't necessarily do it and it, I still moved to the right so it did kind of nullify that like corner help defense and get him out of the way and honestly I still made it so I could get a contact dunk but I was going for more of like a separation hop dunk where it would have got me off of that big man so moving along to clip number 22 this one is low-key sort of the same thing as the other 1v1 court clip where he just got beat off the first step but he kind of gave me the first step like you see how he just moves over to the right like that when you open up to my ball hand like that it's easy contact dunk every single time I want you to understand if there's one thing you should take from this video, if it's like for the basic people who just want to learn how to contact dunk better, it's really about, contact dunks are about this. It's all about speed and angles. Now, yes, you can simplify that and like, you know, maybe expand that to more of like a, well, what about my build? What about, what about their build? But just understand, contact dunks are all about speed and angles. And then you can like get down to the, the nitty gritty of like, oh, but I only have 85 driving dunk. That dude has 99 block, stuff like that. You get the deal. But when slash takeover is on, especially all about angles. But anyway, moving on to clip number 23. This is a nice one that go over, got overlooked just by the fact that it was like mixtape stuff. But I'm going to just take my mouse right here. Y'all see the shot clock right here. It's 1.5. This is stuff that I keep in mind all, all the time while also peripheral of watching this dude still setting a screen. If he were rolling or like slipping, I don't know what I'd do in this situation. But he's taking AK completely out of the play. This forces full switch. And with all that in mind, I see 1.5 left on the clock. It's time to just go for the block all out like I was just trying to block it not give any chance of a of an offensive rebound and that was my only my only real good shot at it so anyway just keep in mind that was that was a real cool clip right there <laughs> um this one right here not too much explanation just sizing up the defender and the help defender didn't really commit too far so it was just gonna be an easy dunk now this one right here beautiful hop again and it's like yo peep this like for real so i'm sizing him up a little bit and this is where i'm gonna I'm just chain this into a different topic here so um a lot of people you know who don't do this slasher stuff i'm i'm sure they've never played on a slasher a day in their life and they have all this stuff they want to talk about like what's with all that useless dribbling you're doing up at the top bro this is all this is all reasoning like look at how if i would have just ran in and hold x like everybody says to do right there i'm getting double teamed i'm getting pinched i'm getting put in all types of situations i don't want to do so what do i do I do this, get back to the other side, boom, he cuts it off again. So I'm moving back into the middle. This time he doesn't help like crazy. And yo, this is where I just love what this Crawford package does, bro. Like, it's just so different from any other package. And I understand, like, it's not the most optimal situation in every situation, but bro like when you learn this package it is such a beautiful thing and i've only had like a couple days of experience again from when i put it on a lot of these clips i was able to get in literally like one day and one run of just of just playing it okay i was going to give a little breakdown on this part right here just to kind of detail what the video was about like a couple days ago on like the whole how to guard iso but there's no correlation a lot of y'all were telling me like oh what happens when you when they put their big men on the wing and you can't uh just push them into the corner like that this is not really the same relation this guy's sitting paint this guy is obviously on the wing i'm gonna just put it like this though he could pinch me a lot harder right here and give problems like that but obviously i'm nowhere near the top of the key either if i were this guy i would have been guarding me on my hip right here off top so that i can push him like into the, into my wing help defender a lot higher when you get this low you can't really help like that so just a shout out to like how to guard slashes or what to look for for anybody that is slashing. Look, y'all, I'm not biased in any situation. I'm here to help you guys, and I'm here also here like in other videos to help people understand how to guard slashers too. So just understand, I'm just here to share my information and you know keep doing my YouTube thing. So <laughs> I'm just here to help everybody. But anyway, playing high on the hedge D, it's 18 to 10 right here. I'm prone to do that a lot. AK probably shouldn't have even helped off the corner like that, to be real. Like we have a big lead and we're just trying not to give up threes. Now this is where my build versus his build comes into play. This is the good old, oh, shooting bigs, rim protectors, like you know, the rim sharps. Like it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> well, what happens when you're down 18 to 10 and you gotta take your two? and then you can't even take your twos because I'm just gonna pin it and track it down every single time it, and I'm not and I'm not sitting here and telling y'all it happens every single time but just know that is a pretty legit thing as far as like the lack of finishing ability that he has and then the tremendous like defensive ability I have so anyway 
Number 29 right here, Space Crater and Hop. We'll go over that animation tomorrow, the, the normal 14 Hop Jumper. And then this right here, LT Hezzy. I want y'all to really know, I would like to be playing 3v3 a lot more, but I just don't have the concurrent squad to like constantly do that. Dope, Dope Reality, as y'all know him, um, one of the people I play with. He's been on PS4 a lot more lately. Kitchen, he's busy with track. Cook, he's into Madden so much. And all this comes full circle into like how I have at least one of them to play with at a lot of times or at all times, but rarely two. So <laughs> just know, I would like to be on this 3v3 court more for those of you who have been wondering where it's at, but it's just hard. But anyway. That LT Hezzy, it's great for 3v3. Sorry, I went off on a little tangent there. I know a lot of the new viewers, you're not like really caring about that. But anyway, LT Hezzy, great for the 3v3 court. Boom, you build up crazy speed and just boom, like nasty Jordan Jordan dunk right there. It's it's an awesome thing. Now this right here too, um, I'm gonna give a slight breakdown. We're, we're almost at the end of this video and done with the breakdowns. But anyway, this one right here, my teammate got beat back door off rip. I am okay with this dude shooting the ball no matter like who it is I'm just put it like that when cook is in this situation and he got beat like that I'm going for this chase down block every single time I'm living with my like my opponent shooting a three over a wide open layup and again that's an, that's another thing about my build I, it's great defense rather than just being a slasher but anyway you see the chair pull on that one again instant chair pull it, I don't know why dudes even posting up on 3v3 it don't it don't even work like that this right here crazy dribble move I this is one of my favorites right here so it's cross behind the back so I don't even think it matters what packages you have on and you just have to have less than 70 ball control probably more than uh, it's like a weird thing you have to have less than 70 ball control but it only works on takeover because you have to have more than 70 ball control it's like the weirdest thing ever but you get different animations if you have more than 70 and <laughs> it's so weird but I think it literally just is only for my build basically um, but anyway I want y'all to understand when I'm on takeover, this is one of my favorite moves to do. Just cross behind the back. Simple as that. It gives that really quick animation when you do them like right after each other. And it's just, it's a really cool, really cool animation. I like it a lot. But anyway, now we got two, two blocks on the Pro-Am in a row. Boom, nasty iron wall animation again. Sheep, big man. <laughs> the good old, y'all know, I love to make fun of the rim sharps and the pure rims. But look at this. It, this is what I call a sheep. <laughs> this dude has nothing to do with the offense. He's not going to have anything to do with this and half the time they're even scared to just shoot wide open threes when I'm when I'm up like that and you see I already know the ball is not going anywhere but the point guard so I'm just tracking it down getting the steal again I don't really mean to like talk too much nonsense as far as like the bigs go but like I said there are some sheeps out there who play that rim sharp now this is my signature move if y'all don't know about anything on this channel okay so you see um and I'm trying to like get the right frame of this so you see the original matchup, I'm sorry I cut it out because it was mixtape, I'm trying to make it look all clean, but hopefully you can see this. The original matchup was the, the dude with the back, the backpack was on Kitchen, CB Chillin', right? So now they make that switch. Now this is what we do every single time that they switch, because a lot of y'all, you either think like, oh, I'm gonna ISO the big man with my guard, or give it to the big, and he can just baby the point guard. What we do instead, and I've made this up like probably a year ago, and this is my rule for every pick and roll situation I'm in now, we run it back rescreen and slip down the middle before they can get that switch off properly because if you switch it once you're going to switch it again I can promise you that they want that matchup that they had originally they only switched because they had to now the final breakdown right here we got clips number 40 41 and 42 notice that they're all early releases okay so this is one this is a major tip for y'all as far as like my my build and like if you play with this play style so watch all the early releases if it's late it goes short it hits front rim if it's early it goes long and it hits back rim now earlies are usually more sporadic and like crazy bounces where if you don't have the box out and your teammate shoots an early you have a great chance of still getting the rebound if you have good vertical and stuff like that also note i don't use rebound chaser either like so any all of these clips you see right here no rebound chaser don't ever tell me again that i need this badge okay because i do that stuff on a consistent daily basis <laughs> and i don't really need people telling me that i use my badges wrongly but anyway moving along like i said just keep in mind they were all early they were all gigantic like sporadic bounces and they all go super long lates go short and they hit front rim and on top of that the contest strength strengthify like uh enhances i almost said strengthifies that's not even a freaking word <laughs> it enhances like uh or strengthens i should say the the bounce as well so if you shoot a very late 
100% smothered, you're airballing short. If you shoot a very early 100% smothered, you're airballing long. I can almost promise you, guarantee that. And just keep that in mind for any of my rebounders out there. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all that good stuff. I know this is a longer video, but I hope this puts y'all on game as far as all my slashers out there. Hope anybody who complains about how they're already unstoppable understands that with all this said, this is the mindset of a slasher right here. In my opinion, one of the better ones in the game. In a lot of people's opinion, the best one in the game. And I'm going to just put it like this. There is a way to stop these people, and I've put y'all on to how to do it. Now, whether you take that with you, that's up to you. But <laughs> anyway, if you made it to the very end of the video, put film study in the comments, or just study if you are a little bit lazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, put study in the comments if you made it to the very end of the vid. Um, if we could get this to 500 likes, like I said, we'll go ahead and drop this video right here, the best slasher animations. And I, I don't doubt y'all that that's going to happen at all. But like I said, just hit 500 likes in the first 24 hours. We'll, we'll bring this video to you. But anyway, other than that, I hope y'all enjoyed. Take it easy, man. Peace.